What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Wednesday, and welcome to this week's collection review. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and this week we're jumping into a sick collection of, of vintage Wittenauer and Max Bill designs for Junghans. All right, before we jump into it, a quick wristwatch check. I am wearing a beautiful uh, Rolex Datejust in yellow gold with a black gilt dial, uh, an extremely rare watch that we actually sourced for a client. So let's get into this collection. Its curator uh, is a longtime TNH fan. Uh, his name is Sheldon, and this guy's got some incredible taste. The first watches that he, that he went into his passion for um, were for Wittenauer Chronographs. A very, very interesting brand and, and market, particularly in the chronograph world. For quite a long time, Wittenauer was producing some very serious high quality chronographs, but it didn't just end there. It wasn't just about quality. It was about design as well. And in the vintage manually wound chronograph world, you know, once you have quality, that works as a great baseline, right? But it's the rest that really can make something incredibly desirable and collectible. And that's kind of what happened here with, with Wittenauer. It was a brand um, that, because of its lack of notoriety in the world, really allowed these these watches, these vintage oversized or whatever chronographs or these funky exotic dial chronographs to be like traded for virtually nothing. Uh, and then all of a sudden people realized what these watches were and the market exploded. Uh, luckily for Sheldon, not just luckily, actually, you know, he did his due diligence. Uh, Sheldon got into this market uh, before the, you know, explosion. So after this explosion, Sheldon was very in tune and, and began to liquidate most of his vintage Wittenauer collection, uh, which I do think uh, was a good idea. Because although those watches were way undervalued, you know, before, I don't think that that explosion um, was an insight into the future of, of, of this market. I'm not saying that they wouldn't have continued to appreciate, but I don't think at the rate in which they did. Uh, so he caught that big you know, pop of cash uh, and got out. And he said that that really worked as a wonderful stepping stone uh, on his way to, to his new you know, grails. While he was collecting Wittenauer's uh, and after his liquidation of, of his couple of big watches, he was a TNH fan, he was watching Houdinki, he was uh, really consuming as much content as he could about the vintage market. And that interest uh, is what led him to his new passion, uh, designs by Max Bill, Swiss graphic designer, extremely famous uh, for his collaborations with Jung Hans, whether that's a wristwatch or a wall clock. Uh, these Max Bill designs are unmistakable. But like most things that are that awesome, uh, Sheldon found the Max Bill you know, wristwatch watch is extremely hard to find, especially, you know, in, in, in good condition. Uh, so his hunt began. I picked up this piece. I think it's a wonderful, beautiful watch. Obviously not uh, a Max Bill design. I can see myself in his shoes wanting that, you know, watch so badly and not being able to find one or whatever, but you need to get a fix and, and, and scratch that itch. So that's what he did with this watch. Uh, it just so happened that he, he scratched his itch with a phenomenal watch, something that probably should be worth multiples of what it is. But with a little bit of luck and a lot of hard hunting, you did begin to find uh, your max bills. And your first one was a brass wall clock. This is a beautiful watch. As you said, it's super rare. I don't know much about the wall clock market or at all, but I think that it's super cool that you, again, I hate to use the phrase so many times, but scratch that itch for the max bill. You know, something that is, you know, although of course the exact same in design, um, definitely not something that you're gonna wear or whatever. I, I could just kind of picture uh, a watch geek passing that wall clock every day and just kind of smiling and thinking about the watch that they will eventually get. But until then, this will carry me over. Um, so relatable, man. And then in the middle of this increasingly out of control passion for watches, you remember that your dad had a Citizen Windsurfer from the 70s, complete with his original box and papers actually, uh, in, in a knife drawer in the house. So you went and found that, which is so cool. I mean, you said it's your only quartz watch and uh, I, I would wear this in two seconds. I mean, it looks nothing like the style that I would wear or even you would wear, judging by your collection. There's something about those old digital kind of clunky, geeky uh, 70s watches is so much fun. And then you add in the nostalgia that it was your father's and then it puts it over the top. And it was after that that you decided what you were going to do uh, with your Wittenauer cash. All the money that you got back in principle as well as all of the profit that you made on your Wittenauers. Uh, and you bought a Patek Philippe Nautilus reference 3800. A beautiful underrated reference that anybody uh, would be very, very lucky to own. I think that your story getting there was super interesting. Um, you wanted the Royal Oak, right? You were debating between the Royal Oak and the Nautilus, the Royal Oak and the Nautilus, back and forth. Uh, and then you tried on the Royal Oak at a watch get together and you were just blown away. You know, you just, you just realize all of a sudden, like I think anyone who does try on a Royal Oak does realize, you know, just how well built and intoxicating this watch is. 
uh, just in the case. You know, the dial's wonderful, the movement is great. Once you start reading about it, that, that's fine. But just in the case and the construction of the steel, you're just, just blown away. But then oddly enough, because of how amazed you were, um, the Royal Oak didn't sell you on the Royal Oak. The Royal Oak sold you on getting one of these two watches, and then you later opted for the Patek because you assumed that the Patek would make you even happier. Uh, and you probably assumed right. I would do some crazy sh uh, for that watch. So congratulations on it. I think it's so cool that you are a living collecting example um, of actually trading your way to real profitability in watches and then buying something that is just so ridiculous. I don't give that advice to everybody. Uh, buying and trading in watches to make a profit is very difficult, especially if you're not on the retail end. But Sheldon you know, did it, so it, it is possible. And after the Nautilus, you really went back into the Jung Hans world, back into these Maxville designs. You picked up this beautiful model, which you describe as in bad condition because it is, but I, I find it very, very charming. A steel date model, which I have never seen before, something that was bought new old stock along with another model, very similar, but without a date in gold. Uh, and then if that wasn't enough, you picked up another clock as well. I mean, you have gone, at this point, you have one, two, three, four, five, five different, you know, uh, examples of the Max Bill Jung Hans design. You have got one hell of a Jung Hans collection. I don't know where you should go next, but I'll tell you a couple of different brands that I think uh, you might find interesting. I know Omega sounds cliche with the 50s and 60s models, even though I, I have strong passion for them. But if you tried looking back into the 30s, I know they're very expensive, but you can find some amazing sector dial Omega, salmon dials, black dials, gilt. Um, that's the kind of hunt that I think you would enjoy. Vintage Longines military watches, the Tretakes, uh, Eternas. I mean, there are so many of these obscure brands that have such incredible, like I said, intricate, interesting design um, that I think you would enjoy the hunt. I'm recommending you go after the hunt. Not so much even after a particular style of watch. I think you're looking for the journey. Uh, so yeah, I say 30s Omegas, Eternas, even Universal Geneve pole routers. I think that's a, a whole other world that you could dive, dive into. There were so many different variations of these watches uh, that I think you would have a ton of fun. Thank you so much, Sheldon, for sending in your collection. I had a blast looking at it and, of course, reviewing it. Uh, thank you so much for following Theo Harris for so long. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel at Theo and Harris. I'll see you guys tomorrow.